All right. Welcome, Tech Divas. We're back to guide more success. And like I always say, sometimes we have women on here. Sometimes we have men. We have all kinds of diverse opinions here. This is not just for uh, women in tech to share their wisdom. It's for everybody to help make women in tech 1% better. So you're going to pick up some great tips today on this episode because we're going to talk about a strategic personal plan. I'm very stoked for this episode because I think it's got usable things you're going to be able to listen to Mike talk about and explain. So who's Mike? We are going to be spending time with Mike Unger. He's a certified focal point business performance coach and executive coach with 40 years of coaching, leading teams and training teams. A lot of that over 35 years at Michelin and five years as an army infantry officer. So he may even share a couple stories from the field that are relevant to our audience later in the show. He helps clients improve all areas of their business, obviously helping the bottom line, but helping the bottom of their hearts too. Like coaching the teams to really work better together across all different cultures and communities. So he's led these teams of self. He's walked the walk. He has the t-shirt and he's going to be here to tell us about it. And also thank you for his service in the United States military. Thanks. So welcome. Call. Thanks. I appreciate it. That's a, that's a great introduction. I wanted to talk today and share with the audience a little bit about what I call a personal strategic plan. And this is something that focal point has as one of its, uh, one of the things that we use with our with our clients, but I thought it would be really relevant for your audience as well. So, you know, we asked the question, well, why a personal strategic plan? You know, we spend um, so much of our time focused on, you know, what we're gonna do today, next week, even next month. And we plan our vacations for, for this year, but we don't think about where do I wanna be three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And that's a really, really important thing because it, you know, you'll wake up one day and you realize, wait a minute, what happened to the last few years of my life? Where did, what did I just do? And so working on a personal strategic plan really helps you to set aside and set some goals for the future uh, that will help you get to where you want to get to. And I think the thing that's interesting today, you know, when I think about um, someone who's finishing college, let's say 22, 23 years old, you ask them, well, you know, even if they've got a major, what do you want to do? And a lot of them don't know. But the, the answer is eventually to start with what you do know. Because you know what you want, you know what you don't want to do, and you can go ahead and get started and begin to lay out those objectives for what you, what you know you, want, you don't want to do, and then focus on what you can do and want to do. And where do they get started if they need that inspiration? Well, I like to, when I talk to folks, I think the first thing that we like to ask people is, you know, what are your values? What are your personal values? What's important to you? That's kind of the first step. And then, and then the question is maybe even developing what I like to call a personal purpose statement. If you're familiar with Simon Sinek, he talks about start with the why, right? And um, that's so important. So what, what do you want to do and why do you want to do it? What is it that turns you on about it? Why? So get that purpose defined understand why um, you want to do what you want to do and get really grounded in that and, and make sure that aligns with your values. That's where you yeah. get started. Sounds like passion behind purpose, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, the other, the, the next step that we often talk to folks about is what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And the reality is we all have strengths and weaknesses. The key is you want to leverage your strengths and as we say, manage your weaknesses, okay? I mean, it's crazy to think that we're gonna be good at everything. It just doesn't happen, right? So, um, as we begin to think through how do I, where do I wanna go, what do I wanna do? You know, it's, it's gotta be aligned with things that, that we're good at, that we wanna try to, in terms of what we wanna try to accomplish. And then finally, I guess the last step really is, is really to develop that vision statement. So. We go back to Simon Sinek, he talks about start with the why, which is the purpose statement. And then the vision statement ultimately is what I want to become. What I want to become. So for example, you know, when, and, and it can change, right? So our why typically doesn't change. Our purpose, why do we, why are we going, you know, why do, why do we want to become certain things doesn't really change. But what we do with that and, and where we go does change. And so that, that vision statement can, can evolve over time. I was thinking about my own example. 
because I say I'm on a mission to spark success for women in tech by leading and serving. So I'm just thinking like, how do I know if it's a vision, a purpose, or a mission? Yeah, so oftentimes people will use in literature, you're gonna see a lot of times the word mission and purpose are interchangeable. When you think about what Simon Sinek says and what we try to talk to, purpose is your why, your vision is your what, and your mission is your how. So you're really talking about your purpose, okay? And then, so if you, if you, if you go back to what you said about inspiring women in tech, that, that's, that's the kind of the why. The how is through the podcast, as an example. That's a how. So, so that's how I would split them out. Why is your purpose? What is your vision? So what do I want to become? I want to become a leader in um, helping to advance uh, women in tech. That's my what. How is I'm going to utilize the podcast as one of the means to help me get there. Does that help clarify a little bit for you? Yeah, excellent. Definitely took notes. So can you give us an example of how a career like a vision, purpose, and mission that would go with a successful career so that you could break it into like those things, say a cybersecurity career or something like that? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. I hadn't thought about that in that manner exactly. So if I think about a cybersecurity career, let's say, for example, um, my why might be that I want to um, uh, help people protect their or, or help the, the world be safer uh, place online. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. That's a great example. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the what might be, hey, by doing that, I want to become a, a leader in the cybersecurity space. And the how might be, okay, I got my degree in cybersecurity. Now I'm, I'm getting my advanced degree in, in this. Or, and, and so then I might look at the, the how might be certain career moves I want to make to become that leader in that cybersecurity field. Now, if I, I would like to take it one step further, if we can, you know, so, so once I have that, that purpose and that vision and that mission kind of down in my mind, it's not just about career. I think we have to take a moment and think about that. So, you know, I've got to be able to put several things in balance. So it's one thing to say, of course, I want to become the, a leader in cybersecurity you know, as my, as my, my sort of my vision. But then what about things like my family and personal life? How do they fit into this? Um, health and fitness, um, social and community activities. So you need to begin to then to take a look at all those elements as well and ensure you put yourself in and stay in balance. So I go to the purpose, the vision and the mission. And then you need to branch out and think about really all aspects of your life um, in order to ensure that you keep things in balance. Because, you know, I'm working with a client today and one of their challenges is that they're strictly on their, their work environment and they've woken up and they've realized, hey, maybe I need to something else. You know, this isn't exactly where I thought I would be because they, they haven't thought about that whole picture. And so that's an important aspect. You've got to make sure that once you've got that, that sort of purpose and vision and mission in mind, then you begin to look at other aspects and ensure that you have a good balance. Balance is absolutely key. So where does it break off into setting goals in those areas? Yeah, so that's a great point. So, you know, when we talked earlier, we talked about, let's say you mentioned cybersecurity. In some way, we've oversimplified the conversation, right? Mm. My vision might be that I want to be um, uh, a leader in cybersecurity and, you know, start a family and leave a legacy, okay? So, so it's, uh, you know, we kind of oversimplified in the conversation there, you know, when it comes to career, but you begin to add those other elements into your vision and your mission. So once you have a mission in mind, then you start setting goals to achieve that. And you, what you want to work, work yourself back to, so let's say, for example, going back to the cybersecurity example, I might want to achieve this position with this company in two or three years. And then you want to work yourself back into actions and even activities, what am I going to do today to help me achieve that? And if you can work yourself back into that particular uh, activity, now you're off and running. And even I think, you know, I want to go back to the example of someone who's a, just graduating college. You know, a lot of times people don't take the time to think about that. And it's hard because you don't, 
you kind of go, well, how am I supposed to know this stuff, right? But by doing, by making a plan and, and setting those, those, and developing that, that uh, purpose and that vision and that mission, and then working yourself back into goals and then activities and tasks that you're going to do, you can always change your direction, right? You can change your vision. You can change your mission, but you're already on a path. The, the analogy I like to use often is if I wanted to take a trip, let's say, to Washington State, I live in South Carolina, all right? I need to know where I'm going, and I chart, I chart a route for that, okay? But as I get on my trip, I might have a reason. Let's say I'm going to drive there. I might change my route over time as I learn, hey, I've learned about this location. I want to go over here. I've learned about, you know, I have a, an issue with my vehicle. I need to stop for a while. So you can change the path, all right? You can always change the path. But if you don't know your destination, you're going to end up leaving on your trip and not knowing where you're going. And it's the same thing, I think, with life and with your career. And that's, that's part of what we're talking about. We talk about that personal strategic plan. You've got to have that vision, and then you've got to have that mission and know where you're going. And it can change. It can change. But if you don't start with that, you end up maybe not being happy with where you are. That's super important for tech divas or women in tech because we need to look at all of it, all those areas of the personal plan that you talked about. How do people get started? So a lot of folks can pick up a book and read it and then get going, right? That's a, it depends on who you are. Other folks go, well, how am I going to know what to do? One of the things that, that I like to talk about as a business coach, one of the benefits of having a coach, if that's what your desire is, is we tend to be really good at asking the question. Okay, you have the answers and we get to ask the questions. And so we would ask questions like this and really work, take a, we could take a person through the questions needed to answer that and help them think about those topics. Because it's a bit daunting, right? It's a bit daunting sometimes to wonder, well, where, how am I supposed to know this? But in, act, in actuality, we all have within us some sense of obviously who we are and where we want to go. It's just that sometimes we haven't given it all. So as a business coach, we help people um, through questions actually answer those for themselves and develop the answers and then refine that plan and create it and help them all get, on, get started on that journey if they haven't already uh, put that answer together. Like just write on a sheet of paper. I just did here. Why? What? How? Right? Yeah. It's something to repeat. It's not um, so hard. It, it, you know, and for some folks, it's easy. And they, they, when they write it down, they, they look at it and go, oh, I didn't, now that I've thought about it, maybe I need to change it or evolve it or, hey, I like what I wrote. But I, I really like your, the, when you say write it down, you know, they, they say that picking up a piece of paper and a pen helps to generate creativity in the brain versus just typing it. So that's the other thing. It's a subtle thing. I'm an old school kind of guy. I like to suggest to folks take something as critical as this, they do it with pen and paper in hand, not on the, not digitally. Eventually you want to digitize it, I know. Um, but don't underestimate if you do some research, what that does to generate creativity in your brain to actually write with a pen and a, and a piece of paper. Is there any type of exercise, whether it be writing or thought provoking exercise that can help people take a step back before you even go to write your, your why, your how, your what, and look at your strengths or perhaps some uh, of your favorite assessments. I know there's many out there in the coaching world, maybe some of your favorites. Well, no, for me, it's mostly just, honestly, it's just taking a moment to pause and dedicating some time to thinking about this subject. And as you just alluded to, beginning to make some notes and whether, and again, you could type them or write them, but I'm a fan of writing them, but make some notes for yourself. I don't think it's that difficult. The, a lot of people just don't take and dedicate the time to doing it. You know, a lot of times you, we, you, you asked me earlier about goals and, you know, a lot of people don't even take time in their week to, let's say on Friday afternoon or Monday morning to plan their week to say, what am I going to do this week? That's going to make a difference and help me achieve my, my, um, my vision. So there are some simple things that you got to think about, but you've got to dedicate, dedicate time to these activities. If you are so busy that you can't do that, I think that's the first red flag, honestly, that you're probably not heading where you want to head. And most people will say that that's a, a good practice to sit down and do that kind of planning week in, week in, week out.
So when it comes to strengths, we, do we come up with something here for the divas? Should they take the strength finder 2.0? Should they do a disc uh, assessment? Should they, you know, grab a free one from someone who has it? I know you're a coach. Do you offer a certain assessment? Yeah. Thank you for asking the question. Yeah, no so, so we offer, um, and I, I practice using the, the disc assessment and, you know, a lot of people say, well, we use the term, well, that's a personality test and no, it's not. It's a behavioral styles assessment. And why that's important is because, you know, we all behave differently. And, and what you get out of that is an understanding of how to communicate better with others, what environments you're going to thrive in. And those are really important things. I, I use the analogy, which is, um, or the example, which is probably the simplest. If I'm a low I, which means I don't enjoy engaging with others, and you think you want to go into external sales, probably not a good match. Okay? Probably not a good match. So I think there's, you know, there's some really practical things that you get out of using the disc assessment. The other thing that I will use is a thing called um, use emotional quotient as well. You know, that's a very interesting thing because I think as a as a leader. Um, being aware of others and their and how and being aware of yourself is really important. So that's also, I think, a really key assessment to use to help one understand. But the interesting thing about both of those is behavioral styles probably doesn't change very often. In fact, it doesn't. It'll change with a major life event sometimes. And you really can't work on that per se. I mean, you are who you are. On the other hand, for emotional quotient, if I can need to become more socially aware of others, I can practice that and improve on that. So there's some differences there. And one of the things that, that I believe um, is a true statement, um, there's a little bit of controversy around it, but that most strong leaders and managers are pretty good at emotional quotient, understanding how others are. And so my advice is to, to learn about that, to take that assessment, and, and work on it and improve it because you can become a better, better at, uh, at, at one managing your own emotions and understanding the emotions of others. And that's perfect because that can allow you to lead into your personal plan. So we've kind of laid out a few things here and we'll keep going, but we're going to get close to the end of the episode here. So we got to get the goodies ready. So All right. the first part was assessments. You could take your own online assessment. You can do one through some type of coach. And usually they'll do that for you. They'll go over results and see if they can help you more. You could take classes online. You can engage a coach. Here's the bottom line. There's tons of tools out there for you to read and improve and get better and set direction and find your why, right? You can read them all day long, but what you need is the accountability. That's what a coach can do is they can come into your life, set the meeting, have you put money down on your success because they're going to work with you through that. So for many of you, if you're finding kind of feeling stuck, you don't know where to go next. You want someone to walk with you on the journey. That's absolutely why we want coaches. And that's why I bring coaches on this show because each coach is going to have something that resonates with someone differently. So that's why maybe doing an assessment with one coach or doing an intro call with another coach, get to know the people before you go ahead and make a decision. Cause you're going to find someone who, who gets you, who understands you and can help you figure out what that personal plan is for you and before we go do you want to leave our uh, tech divas with one last story or inspiration yeah i wanted to share something most of you may be wondering what's the saber behind me and that's actually the saber that i used at graduation parade from west point and what, what i wanted to that leads to my story so i would i had the the uh, really the honor and the privilege to be in the first class with women at west point so i started west point in july of 1976 you fast forward and think now 40 plus years ahead from that, the changes that have happened in our military as a result of changes like uh, admitting women to the, the academy. I mean, today we have four-star generals who are women. We have uh, women graduating ranger school. We have women who are doing in, in all the combat arms. But that change didn't happen quickly. It, it took time. And if you think about it, um, you may find yourself in a difficult spot now where you're wondering, can I ever make change here? Can it happen? Can it happen for me? And I guess what I wanted to say is, if it can happen in the military, and you know the military is a very um, heavy institution, 
with lots of history and lots of culture. If it can happen there, it can happen for you in your tech profession. So um, stay strong, stay persistent, keep your eye on your goals, on your mission, and, and I think you can get there. So that's why I wanted to leave you with that story. So sometimes when we think sometimes it's hard, it is hard, but recognize that when you're in it, it's harder. When you look back, you don't realize how much you've accomplished. Yes, Mike. Perfect. That's absolutely it. Persistent, stay the course. And if you have one action that tech divas can take, I like to ask this, like something they can do right now. You're listening to this episode and you think, oh, that sounds good. I should have a plan. What's like one thing you would hope that they can go do after listening to your inspirational talk? If they don't already sit down and make sure that, um, that you plan your week. Okay. That you set aside time. Um, to, to lay out what you're going to do this week. And the assumption there is that you know um, how to, to take that and build into something longer term. But you, it's got to start with your decision to take action today to spend a half an hour, an hour planning out the, the subsequent week, the activities you're going to do, and the deliberate things you're going to do to achieve that mission and that vision and become really uh, fulfill your purpose, if you will. And with that, where can people find you? So my email address is m. And my last name, U-N-G-A-R, at focalpointcoaching.com. And my website is michaelungar.focalpointcoaching.com. Well, thank you for being an ally. Thank you for, you know, standing up for our country and standing up for women. And I hope we can move faster. Just like yes. in time, it took a long time for us to get uh, to some level of uh, equality or equal opportunity, we'll call it for uh, women in the military. And we're kind of hoping for the same thing here. We really need to all stick to this. So it takes all of us, not just women. It takes allies like yourself to come and build each other stronger and just make this world a better place with positive, inspirational conversations just like this that can help us live our best life. So thank you so much for that. And uh, we hope the Tech Divas enjoyed it. And thanks again for coming on the show. Really great to meet you and uh, talk to you. Thanks, Nicole. And thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to uh to continuing to help in any way I can. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Reach out to Mike if you're interested. Have a good day, Tech Divas, and let's go plan your week. Thanks.